Bitcoin uh, highly speculative, but said a crash, whilst it would hurt some investors, does not prove or provide for systemic economic risk. The potential for chaos, though, is plain as Bitcoin booms, major exchanges have suffered embarrassing outages, and some have suffered setbacks. On Tuesday, Bitcoin exchange Bit, Bitfinex, and Coinbase both reported problems with servers. Last week, more than 70 million were stolen from NiceHash. Bitfinex suffered a similar hack last year. A matter of time, perhaps, before a collapse, as was seen by Mt. Gox, which fell into bankruptcy after 460 million was stolen. Paul Vignier is a Wall Street Journal reporter, author of The Age of the Cryptocurrency. He joins me now. Good to see you, hey, sir. Hey, Thank Dan. you very much indeed. Thanks for I having mean, me on. She's right, isn't she, Janet Yellen? Highly speculative. <laughs> yeah, that's putting it lightly. Uh, she's right about two things. Yes, it is highly speculative. And if it did crash, it really would not affect the wider economy. I mean, I think the thing to keep in mind with Bitcoin is there's a lot of hype right now, a lot of mania, a lot of people want to get in. But this is still a pretty small market, pretty disconnected from the wider economy. She, she sort of said this isn't legal tender. It's not a safe way. Basically, it's not a safe way to proceed. Well, it's not legal tender in that the U.S. government has not recognized it as such. Uh, whether or not that makes it safe or not isn't really the, the case. But the issue of, of safety is a legitimate one. It's just not a matter of because it's legal or not legal. There are two areas. I, I've been reading your fascinating uh, work that you've done. Thank there you. are two areas that I want to talk about this, sure. the safety. The first is whether it goes up or down in price. Right. The markets will regulate that. The second is these two keys that you have, the public and the private. Hey, right. Who looks after your Bitcoin wallet? Uh, if my Bitcoin wallet is on my computer yeah. and the hard drive goes kaput, what happens? Uh, you are out of luck. So, so this is the thing, this is the, in a real nutshell, this is the thing about Bitcoin that makes it interesting. The idea is that you could have this currency that is not regulated by any one central party. The way they do that is by having transactions on an open ledger that cannot be changed. They can't ever be altered. So the key thing is that once a Bitcoin transaction is confirmed, it is confirmed for all time. As opposed to, say, if, you're, uh, if JP Morgan gets right. hacked, your bank account gets hacked, your credit card gets hacked, those charges can be reversed. Bitcoin is different. But what do you do if you lose the key? Uh, you're out of luck. And this is what I'm talking about. So the difference is, in the real world, transactions can be reversed. So security is important, but you know that there's somebody behind you that can probably make you whole. In Bitcoin, you can't be made whole. Okay. So what happens is you have a wallet, which is really just an online account. There are two points of access to that online account. These are the keys you're talking about. There are two ways to move money in and out of that. One is the public key. That is an address. It's like an email address. Right. Anybody can see it. Anybody can use it. I could use it. I could use your public key for me to send Bitcoin to your wallet. The other is the private key. You're the only one who has, or you should be, Richard, the only one who has access to the private key. That's your way. Okay to unlock your account. But as we move to a situation where more ordinary investors want to be yes. in Bitcoin, then the, the risk moves slightly, not just from my computer, but I now contract with Vigna Bitcoin Exchange, and you look after them. And now my risk is, are you good? Are you secure? Are you yes. solid? Right, and, and that's the risk with any third party when you right. trust your money. Right. Uh, again, the difference is, if, and you talked about Mt. Gox, which was an early Bitcoin exchange, it was very poorly constructed. A lot of money was tied up there. A lot of money disappeared. There was no real recourse. That money was gone. Uh, that is a risk when you're going to have your money with any third party. And that's why a lot of Bitcoiners, they don't want their money with any third party. That's why they have the wallet in the first place. That's why this, but the difference is then the security is on you. And even sophisticated people who understand how these things can work can lose access to their private key, aye, they can aye. lose access to their wallet, they aye. can lose their Bitcoins. Aye. It's not for everybody. I'm having it's a not for everybody. I'm having, I'm having a, a yeah. turn just thinking, good to see you, sir. Yeah, thanks thanks for very much indeed. Republican